us about your um tell us about what's new with this book i mean obviously i don't know was it just type type clothes um you know, you know this is I was debating for a long time whether to tell the truth about what happened with the book, but I think it's a great learning experience, especially if anybody is is thinking of writing. Is the the first book was called? It was named after my blog, so it was called "Men Get Pregnant Too," and of course that was a metaphor for the story itself. Talks about my experience through the nine months of my wife's pregnancy with our first child, and how I was anxious and nervous and had phantom symptoms, and how I was sort of the gateway to give news to the rest of the family and didn't really get a break because I was also trying to manage a job, and I was always being told, "You're not the one." Pushing a watermelon through a pigeonhole, so just clam up and enjoy the vacation. I found that very frustrating, so I wrote "Men Get Pregnant Too," and I wrote what I thought was a fairly decent, decent piece of literature. But I noticed that if I was at a signing, and unless I was explaining to the person in front of me, they would pick up the book. Women, of course, would pick up the book and go, "Men get pregnant too." No, they don't, and they throw the book down and walk away. I'm like, "No, no, 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 wait! I didn't get a chance to." So, like, so I said, okay, there's a problem here. Plus, inside, long story short, I had a couple of things I wanted to change on the inside. So, since I had understood that I have not yet achieved Stephen King-esque fame and notoriety, I decided, look, let's change the title, change the cover to "What Do I Do While You're Pregnant?" because I feel it's a little more inclusive and is a little more understanding of what I'm trying to get across in the book. And、uh, hopefully, that would work. And so far, it is. People are now actually turning over and reading the back. Which is、mm. a step up from just reading the front. Yeah, I well, I when I was reading it, I actually was reading it last year,、um, or no, when it came out, and I was supposed to be in an office environment, actually working, and I'm sitting there reading your book. <laughs> I have it under my desk like this, and I'm laughing. <laughs>、yeah. I'm laughing because a lot、see. of the, Well, there's a lot of stuff that I I feel like I can relate to. Well, not really relate to, but that I think、yeah. you know, I find it really funny from a man's perspective. And、um, but even even my wife was reading it next to me in bed, and the story is basically about her and I, and it's it's 100% true. Some of it is is very personal and very revealing.、Mm -hmm. So I mean, she was giggling too. But the reaction I got from her and from a lot of other women is, I had no idea you felt that way. None whatsoever, because the one person you don't want to complain to when you're feeling anxious and nervous and having phantom, phantom symptoms and nausea is you do not want to go to your wife, who's six weeks from giving birth, and going, "Geez, sweetie, my back is hurting and I'm a little <laughs> nervous and tired." Because she'll just lift her head, and look at you, you know, throw up on your lap, and tell you to move along, right? So that's part of the problem is there's really no one to talk to, and the guys generally tell you to clam up. And just enjoy the vacation, and to man up, which is another expression that drives me bananas, and tell you to get over yourself. So this was、uh, why I did what everybody does who has no one to talk to: is I locked myself in the basement for a year and wrote a book about it. Well, it's funny. I just actually was going through、um, I Love Lucy. Did you ever watch that show?、Mm -hmm. And there's this、sure. episode with.、Um, did you watch? Did you ever see that episode with Ricky where?、Um, Where Lucy Pedro is trying to join us over here.、Um, I don't know what's happening, but、um, I see his like image is like pulsing、yeah, at me.、Guys. What does that mean? <laughs> so guys, guys, parents, moms, dads,、um, there's one more seat open. So if you guys want to join us, please feel free. But、um, anyway, so Ricky was Ricky was going through all his dilemmas,、um, all his issues while while、um, Lucy was pregnant. I thought. It was really funny, but the funny thing is, is that you know we go through a lot of changes and a lot of emotional. I mean, a lot of them are pretty emotional. I mean, yes, physical too, but、um, we don't realize as、um, as a partner sometimes that you guys are going through your own anxiety. Yeah. Um, there's stuff going on with you guys too, so do tell us. <laughs> Yeah, you know what it is, and I think that, and that's where the big crossover is because everybody, everybody gets very protective of their territory, and I totally get from a pregnant woman's perspective, going through what you're going through. Not only are you physically, your body is making physical accommodations to accommodate thirty or forty pounds of baby and amniotic fluid and all that business, and your muscles are being pushed aside, your hormones are being. Totally thrown out of whack to take care of this child. You're、uh, trying dealing with the, you know, you probably may still be working and things are hurting and the pressure of getting things done, and 
it's it's hard to find a way to express yourself from both perspectives without it making it seem like you're trying to take something away. And women have been very protective of their pregnancies because, and I mentioned it in the post I wrote for you, Lexi, about the, the Don Draper decades that lasted for months and months and months where the woman's job was to be barefoot and pregnant and in the kitchen and be quiet. So when you, I can understand when you when a man writes a book about, well, here's how I feel when you're pregnant. It's like, really? Like, I can't have this? I can't have this one thing? Can I have this one thing? But there has to be, with, with the shift in gender roles, there has to be some way where the little guy at the back of the class who's the nerd who tries to help with the laundry and the cooking and doing what he can to raise his hand and go, uh, I'm going to have a baby and I'm going to throw up because I'm scared. Boop, list. Well, to be I, think, a clean. I think, too, it's, it's just our way of just saying, you know, don't rain in on our parade. This is our moment totally. right now. You'll get yours later on. <laughs> Totally. But you know what, and I think I mentioned this point to you when we had an email conversation is, uh, I think a good way to look at it is if you were a couple adopting a baby, right, mm -hmm. what would, as a couple, what would you be feeling? You'd be going through parallel emotions, right? You'd be right. nervous, you'd be anxious, you're suddenly now, instead of just waking up Sunday morning and having a bagel and going for a coffee and deciding whether you're going to catch a matinee in the afternoon, like that is gone. That is off the table for a good decade or more. So you'd be feeling that. So the man in, in the relationship, that doesn't change for a guy because his wife is biologically pregnant. You're still feeling that, right? You're, you're thinking to yourself, you know, it seems like when I was 15, I had the entire Star Trek catalog on VHS catalog by star date. And now I'm going to be responsible for a human being for the rest of my life. And it's impossible so, to feel nothing about that. So is it mainly because you guys are um, worried about what's going to happen um, once the baby comes out, is that is that like your whole anxiety really talking to you and <laughs> and making you nervous about what's going to happen, or is it? I mean, is it more than that? I would say it's twofold. I think one, we we have many of the same worries that women have, aside from all the physical stuff that that you're going through when you're pregnant and giving birth, is is the baby going to be healthy? Uh, you know, is it going to grow up to be a strong person? Am I going to be a good parent? Uh, you know, am I going to be able to keep him or her from becoming, a, you know, a crack, a, crack, a crack addict who's homeless and resenting his parents and expressing his anger by tattooing I hate dad across his chest? How do, do I have control over that at all? Can I, can I be a kind of person who will, you know, the kid will want to go to school and want to come home for Christmas and give me a big hug and say, I love you when they're 22? The other part of it is still traditionally and only traditionally, so don't get angry, everybody, <laughs> men still tend to be the main income earners. It's, uh, I mean, I think only 16% of men stay home with their kids. So you're then worried, well, okay, well, now there's this other thing. Now, what if I get laid off? What if professionally I'm unhappy? What if professionally something happens? What if I get into an accident? And there's the, the, all the X's and O's of becoming a parent that you now are a little more nervous about keeping in place. You know, because now there's two of you, and then three of you, and then four of you. Well, uh, so so that's a concern too. Stephen just made a comment over here, which is um, really interesting. Is I wonder if there's also a fear that the relationship with your wife is never going to be the same. Oh my goodness! You know what? I <laughs> that's funny. I don't think I worried about that as much as maybe I should have. That being said, she's not home, but my relationship with my wife is fine. <laughs> just, just, between, just between you and me. But I, I don't think you realize, I mean, I, Stephen, I don't know how you feel about this. I don't think you realize how much it is going to change. Like really, in, obviously in the first year or two, there's physical, there's a physical rehabilitation going on and the sleep schedule is all wackadoo. But then after that, Lexi, how old is your son now? He's four. He's four, so now you're going to be getting into the school and the lunches and the routines. Now my kids are 10 and 8, so now they used to go to bed at 7 or 7.30, but now my son stays up till 9 or 9.30. So now watching, you know, uh, what are some of the shows that we talked about? Like Borgias, you know, <laughs> forget about it because you can't put it on till 10 and you can't have the TV on too loud. So we basically squeeze in like half an hour of ballers on HBO and fall asleep, and then we go to bed and you're too tired for anything. And of course, Absolutely. I don't think we realize how much it's going to change. Oh, it's not going to change at all. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Do you it find will. it, um, do, you, do you think now that your kids are um, older that, well, obviously, every stage is different, especially even for parents to um, having a son who is a preschooler, he, he obviously is kind of a, 
I'll say it like <laughs> attention whore. Smoker. <laughs> a what? He's such an attention whore. He just like an attention wants, whore. Yeah, he just wants. And I bleed. To think I bleed oh, myself out before. But I, you well, know he's what? he's the first born, right? Well, yeah, but you know, he's the only born, and and the thing yeah, is that we can't even have a conversation without him wondering why he's not a part of it, you know, but I mean, as oh my goodness, you get yeah. older, I mean, obviously you've got two, so they can entertain each other. And then as they get older, huh. well, if only that were true. Yeah. <laughs> if, if only they did. <laughs> but, um, well, well, we get, we get that. Well, that's another thing too, is we'll, we'll tell each other, go, excuse me, sweetie, mommy and I have something we need to talk about. Why? Just please. So, She'll walk away, then we'll discuss what we need to discuss, then she'll come back in, so what would you talk about? <laughs> if we wanted you to know, we would have invited you. The fact that we said, please leave, means it's none of your business. And you have to, you have to exert energy for 15 minutes just to, just to share like three minutes of a conversation with them, without them, I mean. It's, uh, it can be tiring. I wish they could You're entertain exhausted right now. other. Do you mean WF w wrestling at six o'clock in the morning? That's oh my goodness. Yeah, that's I have a, I have a, can I tell a story? I have a okay. story. So Stephen will appreciate this. How did I get into Sopranos? When, uh, when my son was first born, my wife was breastfeeding and her, her last session of breastfeeding through the night was usually around five in the morning. And then I would take my son out so she could sleep uninterrupted so if he didn't nap or something so I'd take him out on the couch and he was just a few months old and I'd lie down on the couch at five in the morning on my back with him on my chest and he'd fall asleep and I would watch Sopranos on DVD so there were all these people you bleep and bleep 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 people getting shot and assassinated and swearing and cheating on their wives with this little peanut baby and it was like glorious time I loved that time I'm like can I have like a bag of chips and a beer at 6, 5 45 in the morning or does that not count <laughs> But uh, absolutely, the the solitude was lovely. Well, I think um, I think that, that stage is actually. I know it's really tiring because that's when um, you know the baby needs to feed every few hours. But but yeah. I would have that stage again in a heartbeat. Like if I had to, if I had to compare it to what I'm going through now, because now I can't even hear myself think you know because I have because he just won't shut up like I just you know yeah. I don't know what it is I somebody once told me one of the blogger moms said to me you know she because I asked her I said how do you get all this stuff done you know like right. she, he's already um she's already way ahead of me and you know how I am when I work Kenny like I just I'll just get I'll just go boom 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 but then this yeah. one amazing and then I asked her how she gets all her stuff done and she said well you need to have another kid so they can entertain each other and I'm just thinking wait a minute like, let me let me figure yeah, that one out first uh, wait, here comes the train this one's for Steven is uh I, I I've heard that if your kids are the same sex they play together better they interact better than if there are two different sexes because I have friends who have two sons and the two of them just disappear in the morning they make puzzles together. They play games together and board games. And my kids, it's like, forget about it. Uh, yeah, one of them wants to watch My Little Pony. The other one wants to watch Discovery Channel. I don't know if that's quite yeah. true. But I've seen, I've seen complete opposites. Um, I mean, I, my my son play, plays with twins and um, twin boys, and they hate each other. And then I have another friend who's, you know, got two girls, and they don't. All they do is fight. Right. You know, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you know, there, there is something, there is something about the, the newborn stage that they are just sort of a helpless pee in a pod. And if you want to go, you pick them up in the baby seat and you go. When my wife said, I think it's time that we start to toilet train my son, I said, no, 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 no. And she's like, why? I said, I said, because when you're in a restaurant and they just go in the diaper, you just keep eating. But as soon as you have, to, you have to go to the bathroom, come, come, and you're pushing your chair back, and you've had two bites of food, and it's off you go, and you're sitting on the toilet, and you're holding them up over the seat because you don't want your mom to touch the seat. It's a, it's a whole hassle. Don't. Don't toilet train them. Oh, but, my God. But in all, in all seriousness, you know what? I like the stage I'm at now because, like, I had this going on. I picked them up uh, about an hour ago from school, and I said, listen, kids, make your own snack. Sort out your stuff. See if you have any homework to do because I have an interview to do. 
and I'm not yet at the stage where they're 15, 16, 17, and 18, and they're borrowing the car, and it's one in the morning, and they're not home when they said they were going to be home, and why aren't they answering their cell phones? Because I know, for me, that'll be terrifying. It's just, at least they're still, they're autonomous enough to go get their own stuff, but they're dependent enough that I don't have to worry about their safety overall. So nice. are they home now? Not good. Yeah, they're in there. Oh, okay. I'm actually surprised. My daughter was peeking in the window there before, but I think I scared her. I think I went, Harper! And she like, ran away. I can't believe they're not over my shoulder. <laughs> um, Stephen just, uh, sorry, I just, uh, Stephen, I wish you would log in with us. Um, he just wrote, my two boys are upstairs right now watching their fourth episode of Barbie. <laughs> Go <Going>. ahead. <laughs> I just, I just had to upgrade. I just had to upgrade to unlimited, unlimited uh, data download at home because I realized that my daughter was constantly streaming My Little Pony on Netflix, and it's a new thing she's into. And then I got the bill, and it's like an extra fifty bucks because she went over by like sixty gigs. I'm like, what's this? And she's oh, like, oh gosh. I've, been, I've been watching My Little Pony. Oh my gosh! So, but I, I don't know. know what doing in there. And that's that's she's probably in there having junk food. <laughs> That's one of those um, hidden things that they don't really tell you about, is it? Isn't it? Because um, I just realized that the more, if I go on YouTube or Netflix or one of those um, video channels, I mean, it eats your data really fast. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. Just to give you an idea of how I keep my my kids autonomous, is I told them I said, okay, go fix yourself a snack, and try to make sure that it's something healthy. I'm gathering my laptop because I just received your tweet saying, okay, in five minutes, I'm going to log on. I'm like, oh my God, I was halfway home walking home from school. Go, 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 go. I'm like, something healthy. Whatever it is, just make it something healthy. She goes, well, if I add quick mix to my milk, is that <laughs> healthy? And she knows, right? She knows I'm going to be out here for half an hour. She's like, oh, he's never going to know. I'm like, just a little bit. And she goes, oh, just a little bit. But I go, don't, I don't want to hear, uh-oh. I meant to do a little bit, but I put in like 18 tablespoons by accident. But uh, she must have found something because they're, they're in there. Hey, but you know, if they if they have a high, they'll crash really good later on. Yeah. I was thinking, I mean, I'm in Canada. Not, nothing is free in Canada. He says he thought everything was free, unlimited in the OC. I'm in Montreal, so like I'm thousands of miles away, and we, we pay more, I think, for our uh, like cell and Wi-Fi service than uh, I think anybody else does in the Western world. It's ridiculous. We're he's in, overtaxed. He's in Toronto. Oh, okay. oh, you're in Toronto. Oh, look at that. Traffic. Talk about traffic. Yeah, yeah. Things are not unlimited in the OC ever. <laughs> I think everything. Are you in the OC? What, yeah. what county are you in? I'm in um, Orange County. Oh yeah. I'm in oh, Laguna nice. Beach right now. Um, right. So it's, it's yeah. I think everything is much more expensive over here. I they they take advantage of like where you are actually if they think that. Um, or whatever. I don't know. Right. So, right. So. Yeah. But um, anyway, so how, so let's go back to your book really quick. Um, I, okay. were there any um, other changes you made? I mean, as far as the content goes? Um, not, not too much. I, I, I included in about the author because I also realized that people wanted to know more about the person they were buying the book from. Since I'm not Bill Clinton, they, they uh, had no reason to know who I was. So I did that as well. I reread some parts of it because as uh, I went to a couple of book club meetings and as people talked about things back to me, said, you know what I found really interesting was this part. And I actually went, <gasps> I wrote about that. That was weird. <laughs> so um, that was like a... Uh, there was a chapter where I talk about we had genetic testing done to see if uh, if there were any um, mental disabilities or anything like that. And when the test came back above what would be considered minimal, so we had a whole long discussion about how we're going to handle that and what are we going to do. And uh, I just want to sort of make sure I didn't regret putting things like that in. But like you know, as I don't know how many of you out there blog or what have you, is you're always riding that edge of being personal enough to be interesting. Mm -hmm. But without being regretful six months after the fact, especially, I think, for parent bloggers, which is such a fine line to walk, because it seems we're all competing for this space. And one of the ways it seems to get to the top is to share as personal stories as you can about your life and your children, which is fine when they're two or three. But when they're 10 or eight and they're right now in there on the iPad, who knows what they're clicking? It could be my blog for 
all I know is I think I'm getting page views in there and they're getting traumatized. So, uh, I mean, that was tough just <laughs> to make sure to make sure that what was in there, I was comfortable with being in there. And it's I also really just want to do it to move on and write another one. <laughs> well, well, you should. I mean, I mean, I think sometimes, you know, if you if you start on one, I mean, you'll probably have that little bit of followers that you don't really know about. And then um, you never know the second book might actually get you further than the first book. I mean, the second book might be a lot more interesting. And yeah. the, the lady that um, published my book, she's um, she wrote a series of books about her life. You know, I mean, I think all of us have interesting things that have happened in our lives. You know, we can all write a book. I mean, I think so. It's just a matter of figuring out how you're going to construct it and put it all together, right? But, Absolutely, um, yeah. But she wrote a series of books and, um, you know, and then she's been on television a few times because of it. I mean, I mean, she she was just you and me. <laughs> your, yeah. probably, your life's probably more interesting than mine. And, you know, and, um, you know, it's just she just wrote quite a few of them and eventually she, you know, she became known. Um, I mean, she's not famous or anything like that, but she's, um, but I just think that the more you, the more comfortable you get with it, I think you should just keep going. And um, well, that's one of the surprises, how much I, I, I was surprised now with how much I just enjoy writing, how much I hate promoting and not this, this is easy, um, but how much I just love writing and I find it, it's no work, it's time but it's not real work. It's a, I have a sort of a personality type where it's always hard for me to get started on a project, but once I get going, it's hard for it to pull me away from it. So the blank page is my worst enemy, but I find once I get going, it's just blah, like yeah. just in, go. In, I know too, um, you also mentioned something about um, blogging as well, just really quick. I just, you know, I was just thinking, um, maybe about a year ago or something, I started writing a blog about, because, you know, my my website is called Voicebox, but it's basically, um, it's basically a site where other parents are invited to talk about their experiences as parents and the many things that they go through, any advice they have for other parents. But um, I can't really write things like, personal things that are yeah, off the yeah. top of my head on there. I mean, as much as I want to, if, if you, if I were to come out and tell and show you exactly who I am, my, my real person, my own personality, it might shock you a little bit. And, you know, and I always think I have to be neutral about a lot of things because I run a community, but, um, right. and, and that's, and I think um, a lot of bloggers go through that where, you know, they don't feel comfortable enough to write their actual feelings to write about the real truth unless they put, they have an alias of some sort, which I've done um, a few times. And I found, too, I actually have another blog where um, I, I write just a bunch of um, just my real thoughts where I just... I just thought, you know what, I'm going to put a different name on there. No one's going to know who I am, where, I mean, where I come from. I'm not going to make it all fancy or look nice. I just want to, I just. It's like, called like story, storiesfromhell.com and everyone thinks you're like a six yeah. foot five black man. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. I mean, just things that really come out of my head, you know, stuff I don't have to revise or I don't have to, I don't have to reword because, you know, because it's just me. It's just me yeah. talking to this, um, to the computer. It's my own personal therapy. But at the same time, yeah. I found that it actually gets a lot more natural views than right. my own stuff that I have yeah. to actually promote and get people to want to look at. And I have people who actually want to, um, who are asking real questions and want to, you know, want more. And yeah. it's, it's really interesting. But well, you know what, it, that, that's, it, I also, one of the things that parents are reluctant to talk about with each other, but once you open that door, it's like a floodgate, is the, I think I once called it the dark underbelly of parenting like the dark times, like there are times when it, one of the, I remember my wife telling me one of the greatest things she was ever told is when somebody said to her, you know, you don't always have to like your kids. 
you may always love them, but you don't always have to like them. And she said, it was just like, oh my God, like, thank you. And it's the same in your relationship too. Like sometimes you just, it's just too much. And, and you, if you put that out, I was going to say on paper, it's a bit of a dinosaur expression or online. It's, I think it's a great help to everybody reading, but then of course you run the risk of it's there forever now. Right. Yeah. So you wouldn't want your kid when they're 11 years old to stumble across the one post that says, you know, what a horrible year day you're having and he's driving me bananas. And why don't they stop asking me questions? And all I want is a day by myself. And it's, it's sort of always a running joke with my wife and I it's like what do you want for Father's Day truthfully like pie in the sky is take the kids and go camping for a weekend like you that's what I <laughs> you know but you can't say that because I think what a lot of us want the idea thing is just, just time and space every so often not all the time but every so often and it's hard to express it's hard to get out there because it hurts well, it has the hurt feeling potential what would happen if he actually did say that to her? What do you think would happen? Well, I, I think she would understand. I think the because my kids are still relatively young and they were but they're old enough to they're old enough to not understand if you sort of get what I mean. I think their feelings would be hurt though if they said, "Daddy, okay, come, it's, it's Father's Day on Sunday, but you were all going out and leaving Daddy alone." I think I think they'd be hurt by that. Then I am aware of that, so we just reschedule for later in the week. Well, I. Uh, I think it just takes a special man to, you know, to care more about his wife's feelings. <laughs> just like that well, it's the too. kids too, but I, you know, it's, it's like, so what are we doing for Father's Day? Nothing. You're getting in the car with mommy and you're going away. It's like, oh, oh, why do you hate me, daddy? <laughs> so you reschedule, you put it off. You know, let's not spend any money on anything now. We'll go out for breakfast and do a movie day with the kids on the couch. And, you know, but two weekends from now, let's go do something and get out of Dodge. Well, they're also necessary. they're also at that stage where they um, where you can't go through corners anymore. They understand exactly what you're talking about. Well, not exactly. Yeah, yeah right. But you know. Right. Well, because they they never they never need time without you, right? They never sit there going, "Boy, I just like an evening without mommy and daddy." So that just never happens. Mm -hmm. It always it only seems to go like down that feeling, not up. Yeah, and anything can trigger emotions, but wait till they become teenagers. I think you're going to get there sooner than you think. <laughs> oh, I'll bet. And then it's like, where are you? Like, don't you ever want to be with me? That if we're going to be, we're going to be having this chat and I'm going to have no hair. I was like, my kid, he never seemed to want to be at home. Like, Watch, what, don't they want to be with me? I that book to come out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It's bound to happen. You said yeah. you have, um, you've got a girl and a boy, right? Right. Yeah. And um, how old is your girl now? She's, uh, should I go get them? I don't know if, uh, if that's sort of legal. Uh, he's 10 and she's 8. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. so she still has a little ways to go. But, um, yeah, she's, she's just a spitfire though. Yeah, you might see a little bit of her personality coming out or any, uh, any yourself ready and prepared for. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> She's all, her emotions are all on her sleeve, uh, all the time. Happy, angry, she kicks down the doors and lets you know. Oh no, so much yeah. fun. Sounds yeah. like the hormones are already there. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, I think Steven's just, um, he's, he's leaving soon. But we're getting ready to close here. Um,